In this lesson, I'm going to treat how to combine the output of two computable future operations into one. So currently I have some code written here. Let's start with the last method. You're already conversant with this. This is simply a method I called sleep that sleeps for one second. I have another method called process that sleeps for a little while, one second, and then collects an integer and returns the integer multiplied by four. If I put two, it should return it. Another method gets value async that collects an integer or returns a completable feature of type integer. We return completable feature dot supply async and then we process the value. Now this returns a completable feature. So we can consume the value of this in our main method. So let's say we say get value async and we pass in five because this is returning the completable feature and it has begun processing. We can then say then accept print out the value because we can use method reference. This takes a little while. Our main method finishes before it's done. Let's sleep in our main thread a little bit. Here you see the value of 20. So 5 goes in into here and then this completable feature begins processing it in the background thread. And of course process simply gets 5 multiplies it by 4. And then when it's done then accept comes and prints it out. This is to show you what is going on but this is not the purpose of this example. Let's imagine we had another method also took a little while but returned the integer by 10. Let's say we had a number that represented a user ID. So we have another computable feature is get value 2. So after, let's imagine this was a user ID. So I want to use the user ID to get two things from two databases. Now I can actually call, I can send a request to those two databases and get the two results into one result that I can work with in my completable feature. So let's see that. So I have get value async. Now I'll say then combine. So when I say then combine, I'll say get value to async and then pass in user ID. Of course, for this first guy, we're passing in user ID. So when we pass in the user ID, com, comma, we we'll say A representing the first value, comma B, we can name it anything, it mustn't be A and B. Then we give it our operation. So when we get these two values, what do we want to do with them? Let's say we, we want to add them. So I'll say A plus B. So we want to add the value of this first operation to the second operation. After adding them, I'll say then accept. So the integer that comes here, we can print it out. So let's run this and see the output. So we got 70. So what does 70 mean? The first get value async, we passed 5 into it. What does process do? It multiplies 5 times 4. That is 20. We have 20 for the first process. For the second process, gets the value and multiplies it by 10. 5 times 10, 50. When we get the two values, we now add them together. 
So that is 50 plus 20. And then send the value to then accept and print it out. So that's why when we run the program, we saw 70. Currently, what happens is this and this are all running together at once. And then when their values are ready, the values are combined. So in the situation where this finishes before this, or this finishes finishes before this, it's going to wait for the order to finish before setting the value to then accept. But what if you have a situation where instead of combining the process output of this and this, you want to run this and then you want to use the result to start another completable feature before printing out an output. So what we use there is then compose. And let's say I want to use the output to start get value to async. I will say then compose. Get the integer and get value to async, passing into it. When all is done, I can accept. So if I run this, currently we may not see anything, not because the program did not run, but because the main thread finished sleeping before all this finished. So you know, get value async sleeps already for about one second. When it's done, get value to starts afresh and starts running with the output of get value one. That means get value two adds more seconds to the whole process. But this will not run until get value async finished running. So what we will do, we have a method. Sleep long, man. You can sleep for four seconds here. Sleep long, man, for the main. So we see 200. How did 200 come about? So user ID comes in. We go to get value async. Get value async processes it and multiplies it by 4. So 5 times 4 is 20. So 20 is passed into then compose. And then compose calls process 2, which multiplies its value times 10. So 20 times 10 is 200. Then in then accept, we run it and print out the value, which is 200. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to use completable features in Android. Because sometimes you might try to use it and you're forced to use a higher API. But there's a way out. There is a way out. See you in the next lesson.